頂点に選んでくれたのだこのディアボロはいつだって危機を乗り越えてきた帝王なのだ俺には乗り越えられないことではないキングクリムゾンこれがレクイエムだ俺は初めから何も動いていない Cutscenes and dialogue sequences are universal features of games and are an essential tool used by many developers to construct and deliver their game stories. But despite their narrative importance, there is also a substantial portion of players who don't care for them. And would rather skip to the fun gameplay parts. To accommodate these players, many games include a cutscene or dialogue skip feature, with the intention of giving different players the option and freedom to choose whether to watch or skip the scene. However, some games don't allow that. Two popular examples of such are Genshin Impact and pretty much every mainline Pokemon game. These games contain cutscenes and dialogue sequences which are completely unskippable. And force the player to either patiently sit and watch or impatiently button mash through them. This understandably frustrates many players, and I'm sure many of you here watching this video feel that same way. To some of you, cutscenes and dialogue are just an annoying interruption to the fun action and serve to waste your time, aren't they? <laughs> Don't get me wrong though, I'm not disparaging you. It's a completely valid and reasonable stance for a player to have. After all, what makes games unique as a narrative? Art form is their interactive nature. Unlike books and movies, people enjoy games for reasons entirely unrelated to their story, art, and cinematography. Some people just want to shoot or fight things or simply hate reading, and that's okay. From the perspective of a game developer, it makes complete sense to empower players with the freedom of choice to enjoy the parts of the game they like the most. So, the main question here is why prevent that? Why would some games Games choose to not allow skipping. What factors motivate these designers to remove this option from the player's hands? And is it all justified? Quick disclaimer first this video only covers reasons related to the production, technical, and design aspects of a game's development. It has nothing to do with the actual quality of the story itself. How enjoyable a player finds a story to be is heavily dependent on player preference and writer's skills. And is ultimately based more on vague subjectivity and emotional opinion rather than objective and unambiguously quantified goals and reasons. I'm explaining why a game decided not to have a skip button, not why Paimon has hundreds of lines, never shuts up, and is annoying. <laughs> That's on the writing department, not the game design department. Whether you like or dislike a story has nothing to do with the reasons why this feature is implemented or omitted. So I don't want to see people commenting the game's story sucks and acting as if that's a valid reason to implement the skip. Just a reminder, I'm a game designer, not a writer. I'm not discussing writing and literature over here. Literally, not my job. Okay, let's get started. The first reason is technical limitations. Due to how they are set up, some games literally cannot skip cutscenes or dialogue. Strangely enough, this is one of Genshin Impact's limitations. This is unfortunately the least interesting reason, but it's also the most logical place to start. One thing we tend to forget is that gaming has been around for a very long time, and skipping is a comparatively modern quality of life feature, only affordable due to improvements in technology and computer p r o c e s s Processing. Loading stuff takes time. Time that a player will spend just waiting, doing nothing. So you might as well show the player something more interesting than a black screen while they're there. Cutscenes and dialogue sequences are sometimes used to conceal background processing and loading. The process of loading a new area entails loading in many assets. So, to disguise that load time, a cutscene or dialogue sequence is played while the game gradually loads in the assets. Pre rendered cutscenes. 
magazines are especially useful for this trick as they look great but are fast to load since the game is basically just playing an isolated mp4 video file. For cases like these, skipping a scene results in a longer wait time than leaving the scenes intact. Heck, some games might not even have the processing ability to afford skipping in the first place. This is common to older games but not exclusive to them. It is a limitation which affects stuff like the Xbox 360, PlayStation 2, 3DS and even the Switch, consoles which many of us have actually played with in our lifetimes. In The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, skipping scenes immediately can result in longer wait times. The game is programmed to start loading in the overworld area during the shrine completion cutscenes. Skipping too early interrupts and restarts the loading process, which can result in 5 seconds longer per shrine. And there's a lot of shrines in the game. This means that watching half of the cutscene is ironically the most optimal way to speedrun the game. Fortunately though, this is mostly rectified if these older games receive modern remakes and remasters. These updated versions typically allow for skips since game processing speed has now improved significantly. Some players may have also completed the original games before, and the generally large amounts of text and cutscenes make skipping into something more necessary for these users' convenience. Sometimes, it is also due to how the game structures and designs cutscenes. In the case of Genshin Impact, the game has more than enough processing power to handle load times, but it has set up all of its non-cinematic cutscenes to take place in real time, meaning they are affected by in-game environmental changes like changing weather and time of day, which helps contribute to the game's overall immersion. This does also result in some amusing and unintended side effects, such as incoming co-op players being able to photobomb and mess up the cutscene, or the player character getting struck by lightning, attacked by enemies, and even dying partway through the scene itself. Red Dead Redemption and GTA V also feature similar real-time cutscene shenanigans, while still allowing for skipping. However, this may be due to differences in engine and game structure. Genshin Impact uses the standard, commercially available Unity engine, while RDR and GTA use a custom in-house engine created by Rockstar Studios themselves, which may have all kinds of unique capabilities. Additionally, Genshin Impact features both single player and multiplayer simultaneously, whereas both RDR and GTA are purely single player games that opted to split off their multiplayer into entirely separate games. These are huge structural differences which may affect how a game is capable of handling cutscenes. And there's also interactive scenes, which try to sidestep this problem by integrating dialogue and story with gameplay. Games such as Borderlands, Half-Life, and many others. The story and voice lines still play, but the player is never taken out of the gameplay itself and retains freedom to move and act normally. These games sidestep the problems with scenes by letting the player be constantly engaged and entertained with the gameplay and can be quite immersive as a result. However, they have their own fair share of problems. The player is likely to be constantly distracted and may miss the information the dialogue attempts to convey, the lack of proper camera focus makes it difficult to direct the player's attention anywhere, and it kinda ends up falling apart during the slower moments when there's no action going on. Because the player is forced to awkwardly stand around and wait with no real cinematic flair or proper presentation, so it ends up being more of a preferential side grade than any real solution. The second reason why some games don't implement skips is that they may be unnecessary, unimportant, and not worth the trouble to implement. In the past, cutscenes and dialogue were rarer, shorter, and faster compared to more modern games. The player may only get interrupted by a short cutscene once every several hours of gameplay, and the volume of text was generally low due to file size limitations. It was entirely possible that the idea of skipping cutscenes and dialogue just never occurred to game creators in that era. This in turn cascades down to future games. Sequel games may be built on top of the same engine and base code as the original games, which were never made with such a feature in mind. The nature of the existing game code structure limits and makes implementing such a feature into a programming challenge which just isn't worth the hassle. The older games also train a player base to 
not expect the series to have skippable cutscenes. If previous entries in the franchise never let you skip a cutscene and everyone played it with no complaint, there is no reason to expect subsequent entries to suddenly allow it. New players entering the franchise for the first time and looking for a skip feature will just be told that it doesn't exist and to just deal with it. Let's have the Legend of Zelda series for an example. The early 2D games never had cutscene skips, the first 3D game, Ocarina of Time, never had cutscene skips, and multiple games across the years like Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, and Skyward Sword either never allowed for or had very limited skipping. For years, nobody really cared about this and had just come to accept it. And since most players didn't care, the developers just didn't consider it important to add. Even modern entries like Breath of the Wild and Tears to the Kingdom are the same. Only repeated cutscenes like the shrine completed cutscene can be skipped. Everything else is locked until the player has seen it for the first time. This also applies if a game has very few or very short cutscenes. Games such as 2D Mario have short cutscenes set between levels and sections of gameplay, which don't interrupt overall game flow at all. Early Pokemon games also have short cutscenes consisting of just 2D sprites moving around and a few dialogue boxes. These types of cutscenes are significantly faster than 3D ones, because it takes very little time and animation to move a couple of 2D sprites compared to setting up movement and facial animations for 3D models. Hence why certain 2D sprite games lack skips, they are just too short to be worth the effort. We still see examples of this in the modern day. Hades is an amazing game with a staggering amount of voice lines and dialogue. These dialogue sequences are all short and involve minimal animations from the characters on screen. Additionally, the huge majority of them are optional, and a player could totally just make Zagreus antisocial and never talk to anybody ever. So a skip feature ends up being largely unnecessary and a low priority to add. This justification naturally diminished as time passed, because the nature of game design naturally shifts and evolves. In the past, the simpler nature of cutscenes meant skipping was never that important to both players and developers. But as time passed, improvements in technology allowed for games to push for grander narratives and cinematics, and this in turn increased the importance of skipping. By the current day and age, it's pretty rare to see this be a major motivating reason behind a game not being skippable. The third reason is that certain cutscenes or dialogue are deemed too important to be skipped. Sometimes, cutscenes and dialogue serve a necessary role in establishing context, delivering story information, or highlighting certain changes to the in-game world. In such cases, skipping the scene means that the player misses information and is left lost and confused about what to do next. Here's a simple hypothetical example. You complete a simple overworld story. Quest. After you return to the NPC, they tell you about your next objective and a cutscene plays showing you that part of the game mode has changed. A door got unlocked, a secret cave was uncovered, some enemies spawned, another character might have arrived or left, a giant robot activated, so on and so forth. These changes might have occurred in a separate location far away from the player and NPC, or may be subtle and not immediately visible to the player from their current position. These kinds of situations need to change the camera perspective and show cutscenes to the player in order to communicate gameplay relevant information. In the Monster Hunter series, you are always shown a brief, unskippable boss intro the first time you embark on a quest featuring a new monster. This not only guarantees the player knows exactly what the monster they are hunting looks like, but also provides a bit of information about how the monster behaves and fights. This can also be be for story related reasons as well. Perhaps there might be some parts of a game story which absolutely need to be shown to a player for some reason. Maybe it's because they are critically important plot points or feature a huge shift in the story's current circumstances. This is likely the reason why the Mass Effect series does not allow for skipping. The series' core premise is about the player
player's choices being able to influence the story's direction, meaning that all cutscenes have to be made mandatory to show off those story changes. Of course, what is considered important is based on the creator's judgement, and the player's reality may differ from expectations. At any rate, since this reasoning is only ever applied for key important scenes, skipping is typically allowed for the game's other scenes, so it really doesn't matter too much. The fourth reason is due to something best called creator's pride. It is an intentional rejection of the types of players and player behaviors which skip features and coverage, even if it is technically detrimental to some players' overall game experience. Creative work takes a lot of time, energy, and effort. From the perspective of a creator, I'd want people to fully enjoy everything my work has to offer. If you are a writer, you'd want a reader to read from cover to cover. If you are a filmmaker, you would want a viewer to stay glued to their seats till the credits roll. And if you are a game maker, you would want the player to derive enjoyment from all parts of the game, including the story. You don't want players skipping through pages and movie scenes just to get to the funny action parts. A player enjoying the world, story, and characters which you and the rest of the development team poured their sweat and tears into making is the most basic and foundational form of appreciation, respect, and validation that a game maker can receive. So, imagine you spent all of that time and effort doing research, writing multiple story drafts, making cutscenes and recording voice lines, only for people to just skip all of that. The game could have the greatest story ever told, receive tons of critical acclaim, or even be praised as a cinematic masterpiece. Final Fantasy VII, Metal Gear Solid 3, The Last of Us, and countless other game series. It does doesn't matter. Some gamers don't care. They want to skip all of it. Countless hours of effort rendered meaningless in the press of a single button. That is a thought which is actively repulsive and insulting to a creator. It not only wastes the artistic potential of games as a narrative medium, but also wastes and disrespects the creator's personal efforts that went into making it. Working in a creative field is already a tough job as is. Poor job security, low salary, long hours, no real recognition and fame, all endured for a slim chance of turning your imagination into reality. You give up a few things, chasing a dream. Throw away that dream and you'll very quickly find yourself with nobody willing to bother. As a creator, it is perfectly understandable to think, why should I even accommodate people who don't appreciate my work, and willfully reject the notion of letting players skip their story. The players who complain about wanting skips aren't worth catering to if it means compromising your creative efforts, because they likely wouldn't have cared about your creative effort to begin with. There's even a financial stake involved. Producing all of that story content may involve a lot of labor hours and isn't cheap, so some game makers may be motivated to make these scenes unskippable to maximize the value gained from that investment. That being said, artistic pride and ideals have have their limits. Even the best story, scenes, and dialogue lose impact after being seen for the first time. This is why many story-driven games typically only allow you to skip a scene after you've already watched it once. It is a compromise that ensures a player fully experiences the story, but still allows for general convenience when replaying content such as in New Game Plus playthroughs or when dealing with boss intros and repeat cutscenes. This is, by far, the least justifiable motivation to ban skipping from a player's perspective, because it is the only one with zero practical related reasons supporting it. It's purely motivated by the creator's own personal desires, which is a perspective that most players won't care to understand, and it's sadly a bit unreasonable to expect them to. Hence why I said working in a creative field can be a rather tough job at times. Now, fifth and final reason, the most unintuitive for players to grasp and divisive one of all, to ensure that as many players as possible can understand and keep up with the story. This is the main reason why games like Genshin Impact and Star Rail don't allow skipping outside of repeated boss intros. To put it bluntly, the average gamer is not very story literate. That isn't an insult, it's just the sort of dilemma which 
which anybody in any design related field will face. Game design is all about making things fun and accessible to players of many ages, regional backgrounds, and general media literacy levels. And since some stories may be quite complex, some of the more difficult to grasp concepts need to be simplified so that players can more easily understand them. This is why annoying helpers like Paimon exist to repeat stuff to you. Players who are tempted to skip will consequently struggle to follow and understand the story, which means the story will automatically fail to engage and capture these players' interest, regardless of whether the story is actually good or not. Therefore, by making the scenes unskippable, all players are forced to follow along with no shortcuts, just like a school lesson. There are two additional dimensions to this, the narrative motivation and the financial motivation. Narratively, the game's plot may be complicated or require mandatory reading to understand. Skip features would severely compromise these games' foundational core structure and reason to exist. Players typically skip in order to get to the good parts as soon as possible, but good stories do not consist solely of just the good parts. They have peaks and valleys in plot structure, pacing and excitement, and the good parts are good because of the narrative buildup needed to get there. Boring, slow parts of a story may be necessary for world building, plot points and character arcs, and help build the emotional investment for the story and characters. But these are the parts which a player is most likely to press skip on. Skipping these boring parts sabotages the narrative buildup, emotional attachment, and satisfaction and catharsis that a player would normally feel when these setup elements eventually pay off at the cool parts. If a player spends a lot of time interacting with and learning about a character, it ends up hitting the player all the harder when that character gets either killed or saved. If a game story is truly that critical to the overall game experience, it is a perfectly reasonable call to not allow skips in that game, at least until the player has already seen it for the first time. Certain games such as visual novels pretty much structurally fall apart if they allow for skips. AI Somnium Files and Nine Persons Nine Hours Nine Doors are two games from the same creator with such limitations, being story-heavy mystery visual novels which involve the player repeatedly viewing variations of the same scenes and exploring different branching routes. Because unraveling the core mystery of these games relies upon the player spotting minor details and differences within variations of the same scenes that change based on the story route, these games cannot allow for conventional scene skipping. Instead, they allow players to fast forward lines which they have already viewed on past playthroughs, which automatically stops upon them reaching new lines which have not yet been seen. Somnium Files also attempts to engage players with quick time events in their scenes, adding a bit more gameplay involvement. All the boring details are necessary to understand the stories, meaning they cannot be skipped or else the story becomes difficult to follow. And this happily coincides with the financial goal, a rare instance where the creative and financial sides of a game agree about something. Forcing all players to sit through the boring narrative buildup means that a higher portion of players followed and understood the game's story, and therefore received the full narrative payoff of the story and characters. So, what happens if a game derives financial revenue from its story and characters? This can be seen in full effect in Honkai Star Rail, a game made by the same creators as Genshin Impact. Aventurine is a character who was intended by the story to appear suspicious and unlikable on first impression, only for later parts of the story to expand on his personal history, motivations, and perspective. These sequences are long and boring to go through, but gradually built him up as a genuinely compelling and engaging character over time. And this all succeeded. Audience reception towards Aventurine shifted radically, with many players now showing a great appreciation for his character and consequently being motivated to spend money on him. If the game allowed skipping, many players would have skipped past all these scenes because they didn't like him and wouldn't go through the full narrative cycle necessary to develop Aventurine as a character. Skipping actively sabotages narrative structure by design. Gacha gaming aside, this applies to regular games too. Story and characters can be a crucial part of a game's positive experience, which can then translate 
translate into positive reception and sales. And maybe the game's creators can use those very story elements as a basis and foundation to sell DLC or sequels in future. Allow skip and all of that gets lost on some players. As strange as it sounds, there are many many times where developers shouldn't listen to what people on the internet claim to want because these represent a vocal minority of the overall user base and their wants might not line up with the general player base's needs and could end up compromising the game's overall enjoyability for regular players. Of the five reasons, this is the reason which results in the greatest hits and greatest misses because it's really banking on the game's story actually being good. While skips may cause a game's story strengths to be overlooked, they also help conceal a game's story's weaknesses. Forcing a player to sit through everything just puts everything on display, no matter how interesting or unexciting it is. If the story ends up being good, most players will be fine sitting through it. But if the story isn't good, then that disappointment will be on full display for all to see, and players will feel annoyed about having been forced to endure it. Do any of these 5 reasons actually justify having cutscene skips? Well, yes and no. On one hand, they are all totally understandable motivations for either not being able or not wanting to allow players to skip stories. But on the other hand, skipping is an industry-wide staple feature in this day and age. That's just the reality of modern gaming. Intentionally excluding it will always annoy some players. No matter how much you force it, there are always going to be players who utterly hate needing to watch and read stories and just want to bash heads. There is simply no helping that fact. The decision of whether to implement skipping ultimately depends on the unique circumstances of each game. In some cases, maybe skipping is great to have, and in other cases, maybe it isn't. And at any rate, this is just a quality of life perk and won't make or break a game on its own. In the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter if a game allows skipping or or not. Those who appreciate the story will enjoy its scenes regardless, and those who don't care about the story will try to ignore it anyway. If nobody actually needs or cares about such a feature, does it actually matter if it's there or not? How much does a convenience like this truly affect a player's game experience? And will a player really feel that strongly about its absence? Well, that's entirely subjective and depends on the player in question, isn't it? My personal no answers are likely different from yours. How about you tell me what you think, my dear viewer?